What's happening on the US-Mexico border at the moment? Oh. You've spent some time down there. Give me the, I think, was it in December, 300,000 potential uh, immigrants were stopped. That was the number that were stopped? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the getaways is the number that nobody talks about. So 300,000 people were stopped and then let in. How many weren't stopped? How many just got in? Is it more than 300,000? What do you think? Oh yeah, I 100% know it's more than 300,000. So like the number of people that we caught is going to be a small fraction of the, of the number of people that made it across without being stopped. When you look at the vastness of that border and where the wall is, where our ports of entry are, um, where the river is, uh, it, it is porous beyond belief. You can, I, I've crossed that border like 25 times in a week, both sides, like, blah, 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 blah. you know, like I'm, I'm in Mexico. You know, like my phone says, welcome to Mexico. Like it's going to cost you $10 a day to be here. Welcome to the international program by, via Verizon. And then I come back and it's like, Hey, welcome back to the United States. I'm like, they can do this all day long. So the ones that we're catching, the, the ones that we catch compared to the ones that make it through is a very, very small fraction. The ones that really don't want to be caught, the way the cartel will push a bunch of people that they know are going to get caught. Because if you just think of the, the, okay, I'm the commander. I have X number of resources. I have a hundred tr troops at my disposal. Of course, I want to do counter interdiction. So I want to stop drugs. I want to stop human traffickers. I want to stop, um, sex enslavement. I want to stop we um, weapon smuggling as I'm at the river in Del Rio and I have a thousand immigrants cross at one time. How many of my hundred soldiers do I need to use to deal with those thousand people? All right. So I have, I have one guy receiving, right? I'm going to put them in the lines. I'm, I'm, I make some choke points. I funnel them into a specific area. I use some concertina wire to make sure like I have an orderly way. 50 guys, maybe 75 guys, right? So now I have 50 to, to 25 guys left for me to use. And I have this entire area that I have to be covering. But the moment that those people start coming across the river, there's the same time that five guys jump into the river with bundles on their back. And then another five miles up the river, two boats get pushed across with a bunch of Middle Eastern and Eastern, Ukra Eastern European guys that are being smuggled and trafficked across. And then five miles down the river, there's a bunch of young girls that are 11 or 12 that are going back into Mexico that they kidnapped in El Paso. Okay, what? The whole thing's coordinated. Tell me how to distribute my la remaining 25 guys. Also, the thousand that start coming across, the cartel dudes are just going to grab a couple of little girls and throw them in the river. They're going to grab a baby and drop it in the drink. They're going to take a dad, just trip him with a kid on his shoulders, and they're all drowning. Do you want my soldiers to jump in with body armor to start swimming after them? This is the reality every single day across the whole entire river, and it is the largest border in the world. In the world is our border on our southern border. Canada, Canada to the north, gigantic border. Mexico border to the south. You need to stop those Canadians coming in. That's the important yeah. thing that no one's talking about. Those guys. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I got hopes for their next election though. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you explain, you know, for the people who haven't been down to the Mexico border, what is the, is it all uh, demarked in some form or another? Is there some type of, or is, are there elements where it's literally just, this is a piece of land and you can wander across? A, a lot. Texas has mostly private land. Um, so that the border is on somebody's ranch. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey guys, welcome in. In some cases, but I mean, those ranchers, the, the, the cartel charges, we'll, we'll say like a ticket. So if you want yourself and your family to come across your, your um, Ecuador right now, Kind of spicy. Cartels took the whole entire thing over. I'm not sure if you saw two weeks ago, they were like they were killing news hosts in the news station while they were on the street, killing a bunch of people in the street and targeting government officials and judges. And it was happening like in real time, live on the news. So you have legitimate asylum seekers that are on the run from cartels. They move through Central America and they come up to the Mexico border. They pay the cartels to allow them to cross or they pay them extra to facilitate them coming across. Um, this is an endless 
cycle of revenue for the cartels. Like they, it costs them nothing to produce. They don't have to smuggle in drugs. They don't have to kidnap anybody. People are just walking to them. And they, they on the South side have created barriers where you can't cross without permission. And if you don't pay them, they'll kill you. So there's, there's in some cases, physical barriers and in some cases, psychological barriers where, you know, if you point this part, like this point of departure, you'll be executed without uh, a wristband, like your ticket. I could show you what those wristbands look like. Those wristbands color coordinated kind of tell you, I got a round trip. I have multi-trip. I have single direction. I'm allowed to go through this area. So it's super sophisticated. Super sophisticated, all color coordinated and a across this on the southern side all uh, agreed between this cartel that's working with this group with this cartel with these traffickers and it's it's unstoppable the way that we're currently trying to fight it fighting it it's just we're not going to win what is a way that would make it stoppable so when the chinese built the great wall um they recognized that any barricade without observation isn't a barricade. So I can build a wall, but if there's not something there observing that thing, it's not really a barricade because I can do whatever I need to do to get over that barricade and there's nothing to stop me. Um, so there's, like all problems, there's not a single solution, unfortunately. The wall creates choke points. It forces people to go through specific areas. And in those specific areas, uh, we can set up to interdict those people. Now, there's a misconception that there is this barrier stopping people from crossing. There's not. And additionally, there are ports of entry. There are legal places where anybody to include people like Mexicans can just walk across the border. They can walk up and say, Hey, I'm going to be working. Here's my visa, or I'm going to be working at this ranch. My mom lives across the street. And you know, some of those borders, when they were set, some families lived on this side, some families lived on this side, and they've been going back and forth all the time. Um, but there are so, there are so many hundreds of thousands of people that have flooded these areas that it creates a human humanitarian crisis and it creates this logistical problem of how as we the united states government and department of state how do we process this number of people we we, we can't um which is what exactly what the cartel wants and the surges that happen from the executive level so the white house right now they change some policies and the word gets out that it's open borders everybody comes and everybody's coming. What was the word that got out that made it seem like it was open borders? Uh, you get money when you cross. You know, we'll give you a couple thousand dollars. We'll give you a bus ticket to the inland. Um, we'll throw you on a plane and bring you to the city that you want to go to. Um, we'll, instead of you, if you're an asylum seeker, when during the Trump era, for example, if you came in and you were caught, uh, an asylum seeker that just crosses, um, they'll then just on the inland be like, hey, I'm looking for a residency here. Um, if they're stopped on the border, they'll claim that they're asylum seekers. Well, we would make that person wait either at the country of their crossing or the country of their origin for their case, for their asylum case to be heard. Now they get a date, come back in like six months or 12 months to your court hearing for you to learn about the process of your the, your asylum case. Uh, so there's n there's only motivation for everyone to come here to the border and then they get an automatic pass in. Because there's no penalty. That's right. It's like universal asylum. Mm -hmm. What's happening with these detention centers? That was a big news story a couple of years ago. They've, they've always been there. Um, like there, there were more detention centers and larger detention centers during Obama than there were Trump. Um, that's kind of a play of numbers, though, because so few people tried to cross during Trump because they knew that they're going to be kicked back to their country of origin. Um, you know, just a couple of days ago in New York, did you see the video of the immigrants that were attacking the NYPD officers? Oh, this is horrific. The police were trying to deal with 
a small problem with uh, involving a bunch of immigrants and the immigrants attacked the two police officers. The two pl police officers end up grappling on the ground against a couple of them. And then the whole entire crowd came up and started soccer kicking the police officers. And it turns into like this. I mean, it's a, it's a hard video to watch. I, I'm actually about to post it today because uh, I wanted to get some more context as to like, what was the initial call? Why were they there? Like they were there doing the right thing. There, there were actually crimes being committed and they were there to like try and keep the peace as good police officers. And then it was escalated, not on their end, but on the illegals end. And then they ended up getting like skull stomped. This is foreshadowing of what's going to be coming like this. This is just a tiny little taste. Like th those are just immigrants. Th those weren't even bad actors that were trained and are hoping for an opportunity to do America damage because tens of thousands of them came into this country over the past couple of years. Did you see that video of a bunch of people on a plane refusing to sit down because someone was being deported? Yeah. And it turned out that that person had been involved in gangland shootouts and all manner of fuckery yeah so, 10 days ago uh live news near eagle pass another common texas yeah another common smuggling point uh this news host is talking about all the immigrants coming across and this guy in in pretty decent english walks up behind he goes you don't know who i am but you're gonna know my name and you're like what is going on here facial recognition ties this guy to 82 percent that he is a multi-time terrorist that was in Gitmo and he just walked across the border. He's live on television as this terrorist just walks into America and is bragging that everybody's going to know his name. That was, that was almost two and a half, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. What would you do? What would you do to try and fix this problem? You've mentioned that you need to have presumably more staffing, more uh, funding to be able to train people up, to be able to do this. Yep. So th this isn't a border state problem. This is a nation. This is a national problem, right? So the governor of Texas is using state resources. He, he approved operation Lone Star, which is using Texas national guard soldiers to protect the border. So he is using tons of tech of state funding to, to protect the Texas border. It's not just the Texas border. This is America's border, but a whole bunch of, you know, most of California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas um, are bearing the burden of this immigration humanitarian crisis. But the other 36 states are kind of, or the other 46 states are just kind of like hanging back being like, hey, sucks to be you guys. But then we, we bust a couple bus loads up to them. They're like, oh my God, we're like being overwhelmed. I'm like, we sent you 500 of them. Do you know what it's like when you have 300,000 that just came across your border that are in your country? Um, what would I do? I would finish the wall. Um, I would make certain areas impassable. That's Constantina wire. Um, that is armed guards. That is um, men on horseback. That epic photo of those border patrol guys that he was actually using his leads and they thought it was a whip because people are idiots and they actually don't know how to ride a horse. Um, sensors, drones, we have the solutions. This is a fixable thing. We just don't have yet again, the appetite to do what it takes to close that border. Once a border is closed, we open the ports of entry, Department of State funds and Department of State is doing the best they can with the very restricted resources they have. So imagine like the White House is telling the Department of State, hey, you have to be, be to be doing this. And Department of State's like, we don't have the resources and we don't have the means to facilitate this number of people. But then the White House is like, hey, everybody come over here. And Department of State's like, we can't. So these ports of entry have to be opened and the systems have to be fixed for us to be able to process more people in a more um, strategic way. Didn't Someone ripped down a ton of razor wire. Wasn't that a big deal like last week, yeah. two weeks ago? So the federal government is, there's, there's like competing efforts at the, at the border right now. So Texas is saying the border's closed and the federal government's saying, no, the, the border's open. So the federal government is coming down to the barricades and the barriers that Texas has put up and said, we, you can't have those that goes against federal law. And Texas is saying, no, you can't do that. Like this is Texas land and we are closing the borders. So if you're not going to close the American borders, we're going to close the Texas border. Um, yeah, they're literally like federal 
law enforcement is coming in and doing the opposite of what the Texas law enforcement is doing. Wild. In other news, this episode is brought to you by Element. Stop having coffee first thing in the morning. <laughs> your adenosine system that caffeine acts on isn't even active for the first 90 minutes of the day, but your adrenal system is, and salt acts on your adrenal system. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium that helps to curb cravings, improve your brain function, and regulate your appetite. You might not actually be that tired, you might just be dehydrated, and proper hydration isn't just about getting enough fluids, it's also about getting enough electrolytes, and this is the best in the world at it. Also, there's a no BS, no question questions ask refund policy so you can buy it completely risk-free try it drink the entire box and if you do not like it for any reason they'll give you your money back and you don't even need to return it that's how confident they are that you'll love it head to the link in the description below to get a free sample pack of all eight flavors with your first box or go to drinklmnt.com slash modern wisdom that's drinklmnt.com slash modern wisdom Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Tim, you will love the full-length two-and-a-half-hour podcast, which is available right here. Go on. Give it a press.